Hi, and welcome to a special presentation of theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman here in our East Coast studio in Massachusetts, and always love the opportunity when we get to talk to an IT practitioner about what is driving their business and the technologies that are helping them. So I want to welcome to the program Sheila Hartness, who is the lead, lead software systems engineer at Wake Forest. Baptist Medical Center. Sheila, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Stu, for having me today. All right, so, uh, you know, Wake Forest, uh, most people know the college. You, you right. guys are uh, associated with them, the, the medical school, it's, it's a business. You have, uh, you know, so many changes over the last hundred years of your organization. Can, can you tell us a little bit about Wake Forest Baptist Medical and, and your role there? Sure. So. I've been at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center for 30 years, so I saw a lot of change um, through that time. We are a healthcare organization, uh, research, and we are the teaching hospital for Wake Forest uh, University. So we are um, widespread in our scope of what we do. From a business standpoint, not only are we a healthcare for our patients, but we are a research and teaching hospital. So we try to provide the best infrastructure in IT that we can to provide the best resources for the business. So we are trying to um, bring our infrastructure up to um, more modern standards than we have been in the past. Um, but we have went from just being um, no infrastructure to a very high uh, availability infrastructure with our VCE VBlock and that we have implemented. Okay, so bef before we get into the infrastructure piece of it, Sheila, you know, when I look on the website, there's a lot of talk about innovation. And there is. Uh, and some people often say, well, you know, IT has often been, you know, it's a cost center. It's somewhere, yes. if the business asks for something, the answer is usually like, well, no, we'll fill out all these forms or there. Uh, how does the, 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 the organization's innovation mission fit with what happens in IT? So from an innovation standpoint, we are trying to um, grow how we fit into the environment to make sure that we are meeting all of our business needs. So when able to do that, then we are building the infrastructure to meet, meet those needs. So not only are we growing in what we offer to our clients, we are growing our infrastructure um, to provide assets for the business so that we are in line so that we can provide those services whatever they may be, whether they be um, new um, facilities that we're bringing in or researchers. So um, we are trying to align the infrastructure with the direction the business is going. Okay, and can you sketch out for us a little bit, what, what's the scope of, of your facility and the, the, the team that you have there? I think I saw, it's like 11,000 employees, 100 buildings. I mean, that's, this, this that's is not you know a single hospital or any means right. like that. So we have about 125, I think, outlying um, facilities, yeah. uh, a couple of smaller hospitals. We have uh, between 900 and 1,000 physicians, about 1,000 beds, um, acute care. So we are a large institute um, with multiple um, goals for us to meet. So we are uh, striving to meet the needs of our environment, but we are a very large organization. We are the largest employer in Forsyth County in North Carolina. So um, we have pride in that. Um, we are trying to be a leader in research and um, I know we're a leader in cancer research and other areas, so we're trying to bring our um, our resources, uh, you know, more out into the market so that we can meet the needs of what the health care is. Okay, so you, you've been there for 30 years, so we, we could spend a couple of hours walking through some of the, you know, ebbs and flows and changes there, but, but let's go to a few years ago before okay. you had kind of converged infrastructure there. Right. What did the environment look like? What were the challenges? You know, how did budgets and, you know, kind of staffing levels right. uh, affected by the infrastructure? So, you know, IT a lot of time is looked at it's the redheaded stepchild because we are cost. We, you know, it's hard for the business to see the return on their investment. So we had a very aging uh, infrastructure and um, we were needing to address that drastically and uh, budget had been short for a few years. So um, it, the decision was made by our upper management, which I think was a very good decision for us to move into uh, the V-Block arena, but um, you know, we had aging network, we had aging storage, we had aging compute, um, 
just things that had been in place for seven years or more that we needed to bring up to standard so that we would not have any outages because the health care is depending more and more on infrastructure whether they like to think that or not because everything is being um, computerized or records, you know, everything's yeah. online. Digitization is, yes. is definitely the, uh, is. The, the word of the day. <laughs> it is. And uh, we also offer uh, web um, sessions with the doctors now. You can actually have sessions with the physicians and not come into the office. That's one of the new offerings. So Awesome. We're yeah. trying to build our infrastructure to meet all the needs that we can see um, that our customers may want. Okay, so pretty typical. We talk to lots of companies and, and right, you say, I've got my compute, I've got my storage, right. I've got my network. Right. Uh, I'm, you know, fighting for budget, you know, right. always falling behind. So, you know, upper management understood that this yes. was the challenge. And, you know, tell us, you know, what were the goals of, you know, kind of revamping it, modernizing, I think is the word you use. Yep. You know, what, what were they hoping to, yep. to change? So, so we were siloed um, from, um, um, employment standpoint we had storage group network group um, compute group uh, as we grow what they were trying to do was to bring us all um, more in line with the the modern so um, with management deciding to go with the v-block what that has allowed us to do is to bring network compute and storage into one platform so that it is all together that way um, it allows in infrastructure to grow, um, I'm trying to think of the word I would like to use for that, but it allows us to bring all that in scope um, more quickly than we were before um, because we don't have to worry about um, is the compute going to work with the network environment? Is the network environment going to work with the compute? So um, instead of spending time trying to figure out all that by having it all together and, and all of that determined before we get it, it has helped us tremendously. Um, it's helped to um, reduce some of the walls from the silo from um, a team perspective. It causes us to be more collaborative together. Mm. It's going to allow us to be more cross-trained so that we understand the environments more. Yeah, absolutely. It's that, that whole interoperability challenge yes. because even when a vendor puts things together, you've got your own applications. Yes. Uh, you know, I think I saw Epic was a big one yes, that you have. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we know kind of medical and healthcare yes. have not only the applications, but then you've got all the governance and compliance. So, right. you know, there's, there's lots of challenges there. And uh, at Wikibon, we say the more that that can be shifted off of your plate right. and to the platform that's or the vendors correct. that are creating mm -hmm. that, that's going to free you up to do more things that add value to your business rather than doing stuff that, you know, should have been done already. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, for myself, I can tell you, um, my expertise is going to be in the storage arena and that has always been an issue because you spend a lot of time researching, you know, is this code level going to work with this power path uh, because we use EMC or is it going to work with the drivers that's on the host? You know, is the network infrastructure there um, if we need it for um, NAS storage? So um, not having to worry about that, that is something that by going to the V-Block that we have been able to just, I don't want to say forget, but it's not a headache that I have or the other teams have because all of that has already been tested out for us before it's brought onto the um, floor. So um, the infrastructure or the V-Block is helping to reduce the time that we are spending figuring out what will work and allowing us to, to determine more how can we use that platform to build a business and how can we grow and become um, better in our uh, field. It, it helps us to grow from a professional standpoint too. Yeah, so bring us inside some of those d discussions because getting everybody on the same page, getting buy-in, um, there's usually ki kind of a natural uh, pushback against change in general because is. this is, these are the jobs I do, this is what I know I do my day, and right. while I might be buried today, <laughs> oh my gosh, what does this mean when you know right. kind of the end state comes yeah. in? So um, in IT, uh, particularly in infrastructure, um, a lot of times we can be um, proprietary or we, we don't want to give up that control that we have. So um, it, it is a, a cultural change for you, um, but don't look at it as um, job reduction. It is more of a growth pattern. So from a cultural standpoint, we had to look at it as um, 
the whole, not, not on our individual, like from a storage perspective, it's like, did I really want the network guy to learn anything about my storage? How much do I really want the compute guy to learn about, about the storage? You know, what's that, what does that mean for me? But allowing us to grow and understand how the infrastructure actually works together, it allows us to grow, it allows my career to grow so that I am a more rounded um, professional and it also allows me to understand exactly what my applications are, how I can impact um, the whole environment as it goes together. So it, it helps us to be able to spend more time on providing um, a better understanding, implementing the applications instead of spending the time figuring out, well, are we going to be able to make these components work together from a hardware standpoint? Yeah. So did you put any kind of cross-training or you know skills enhancement plans in place uh, when you were looking at this deployment? We are currently doing that. Yeah. Um, so before, we were just kind of uh, departmentalized. Well, now we are changing the infrastructure from a um, employment standpoint. Um, so we are changing our job descriptions and our roles to fit what we're trying to make our environment look, um, which would be the converged infrastructure. Um, so what we, we have now is the converged infrastructure engineers who are your um, leaders, are your top guys in the fields so that we are cross-trained from uh, storage to compute to networking. So as we do that, then our um, more junior uh, employees will become part of that process. So the, the more senior people um, are doing that cross-training in their own group, but then also we are allowing that cross-training to uh, flow down into the staff so that everybody has a, a career path so that we can all come up to, to snuff. So um, which field do you want to be um, stronger in? You can be stronger in network if that's where your field is or in compute or storage, but you'll have a better understanding and you would be able to work through any of those tasks um, because you have that knowledge. And because it is in one platform, and I know the terminology that's used now is run books, um, you can put that together. For, for me, because I am an old mainframer and trying to make all these things work together, it's kind of like when you put your DR plan in place. You want to be able to write that in a, a way that anyone who has any technology experience would be able to read those documents and move forward and be able to pr um, perform those tasks. So my thought in some of this is, why do you want to pigeonhole yourself? be willing to grow, put yourself out there. The more you can learn, the more of an asset you are to your uh, employer and the more an asset you are to yourself. And the less bored you are with your job and the more energized you are, the more you want to really be part of that team. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. Anytime I talk to an IT person and there's the, that fear out there, you know, one of the questions is like, if you had an extra day a right. week, you know, did, would you have stuff to do? And it was like, oh gosh, yeah, yes. there's there's always more than I can do. And if you look at the tasks that you're taking away from them, right. those aren't necessarily the most fun things that That's you're right. doing. So, you know, yeah. it, it, it is a little bit daunting, right. but wh why don't you bring us through kind of some of the, the early deployment, just, uh, yeah. how'd that go, uh, any surprises, you know, any bumps along the road uh, that you kind of lessons learned that you'd want to share with your peers? So um, we have actually implemented six V blocks and every time we've implemented that we have learned something new. <laughs> um, I think the biggest hurdles that we've had to um, overcome as we have implemented the V blocks is because um, one, one of the big things is when they're built, um, they're built and they're wired. Uh, in our shop, we did not have the floor space to be able um, to do that. So we had to, you know, put different pieces in the area that we had. So that was kind of a challenge because then we had to come back and, and we weren't able to um, have the benefit of, all, of everything just taking place, just plug and play. Um, although it was plug and play, it was just a little bit different. Um, it, it was a learning, um, in, it was a learning experience for all of us. Um, because usually we don't work together as a team. Um, you know, I do my little solo part and another person would do their compute or whatever. So it allowed us to collaborate together uh, more. Um, from lessons learned, 
as each one has came into place, we've learned a little bit more about, you know, what do, what do we need to provide VCE uh, ahead of time when we build the LCS documents and everything. Um, so we've learned, you know, more of what do we really want those documents to look like so that when it comes in house, it's more of what we're expecting. Um, you know, the first time is like anything new, um, we did the best we could it, and it, it, it came through great, but we, you know, we just learn a little more every, every time to what we can do to make that experience better for us so that um, when it hits the floor, we don't feel like we need to make any changes. Um, I don't know anything else to say about that, but um, you know, we, we have learned a lot of lessons. It's mostly, you know, um, what do we want the environment to look like? How should we really feel out the LCS? Um, how do we work on that relationship with uh, VCE and, and the vendors? Um, so that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. So what about from the business standpoint? Are there any kind of, you know, new projects, working faster, you know, responding right. to, to more requests, you know, how, how does that right. translate back? So, um, by bringing in the V-Blocks, it has allowed us to uh, deploy applications faster. Um, by having the infrastructure in place, um, not having to fit all the components together, one of the things that we were able to do is Epic 2014 because we were able to bring the infrastructure in place and have it um, up and running and all the testing we needed to do, we were able to bring um, testing up 10 weeks so that we would be able to meet the deadlines for the application. Um, by bringing in the vBlock, it has allowed us to deploy um, virtual servers for the applications a lot faster. It's things that may have taken a week or two before. Uh, because we have the infrastructure in place, we can provide server in the storage within a day, which does help those applications move out faster. Um, another thing we're working on um, at this time, we don't have it in production yet, but we're working on um, um, self-service portal, portal so that the um, individuals can just fill out the form and um, that server will be built for whatever timeline they need, if it's for a test or whatever. So the infrastructure is allowing us to bring to the end users their requirements a lot faster so we can provide um, servers uh, very quickly, we can help them work through any issues they may have deploying the applications. So from a business standpoint, it is allowing us to meet our end user's needs a lot quicker. Okay, and how about the IT staff itself? I hear you talk about you know, teamwork, collaboration. I think about a 10-week project. Right. That's the kind of thing I think in, in your old world, it right. would have been stressful and everybody yes. pointing fingers and right. I did my piece and you right. didn't do this and you know, right. how did this the new environment help? So. The new environment helps us work together more as a team. Um, because instead of us, um, I don't like to use the word um, fight within ourselves, but we, you know, we like to make sure that ours is, our area is working correctly and um, we're the best. So what this is, has allowed us to do is to work together more as a team, more collaborative, um, by us understanding what the needs are ahead of time, that allows us to be able um, to focus on that and um, ask the correct questions. If, if we see that the application is coming in line, um, I may, from a storage standpoint, know that I need to ask specific network questions or compute questions, but it allows us to work more as a team to understand what that end goal is so that we are all on the same page. Um, and we can do that very quickly because we're working in the same platform and we're not off on our different pieces. Yeah, as anybody knows in kind of team dynamics, right. it's those boundaries of communication where you often have yes. problems. And, and now if we kind of blur some of those lines and, lines and blended it more, right. you know, we, we have less chance for there right. to be communication problems. So instead of having separate teams, yeah. we are one team yeah. now. So we are all working toward the same goal. Okay. Awesome. So you've talked about some cross-training, retraining. Can you talk about, you know, has there been a change in how many people you have, balance of resources, you know, how's the kind of the team after look compared right. to before? So, um, number-wise, we're the same. We have not um, decreased our staff. We have changed how we work as a group. So we're doing cross-training. So we're allowing the more senior staff to um, do more, um, project research, more um, 
in-depth studies. How, how can we make our platform work for what we know the business needs are? It allows us to do cross-training within our group. It allows us to bring the more junior staff up um, to meet the needs of our group. Um, instead of having to do the mundane day-to-day -day tasks um, that some of the more senior people were doing in the past, now they're being able to focus on projects and um, more interesting things within the group. And it, it does allow us more time to talk and train each other. All right, uh, and Sheila, uh, talk about your, your relationship with the vendor side of things. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, VCEs now moving back inside EMC. Right. Um, there, there's kind of Dell's uh, acquiring EMC. Does that have any impact right. on what you're doing? And how, tell, tell us about your relationship with the company over the last few years. So anytime that you have change, you need to work on that relationship. So um, we've been working with that relationship with VCE. And I think any success is according to how your relationship works with those companies. Um, we've had a long-standing relationship with EMC. Uh, we've had a long relationship with our VAR. Um, um, and our relationship with VCE is growing. Every time we, you know, we deploy an environment, that grows. So I can't ex express how important it is that you need to build on that relationship. I don't see that it's changing. I see that it's growing. Uh, with the merger um, and with how EMC and VC has worked together, I don't see the merger um, depleting that any. I see that expanding that um, environment. It, all it does is bring more resources in in house that can help us grow and look at, you know, what's out there for us. So, as you build that relationship, it allows um, VCE to learn what our business needs are and what our goals are. And then it lets us work on that relationship with those uh, individuals who work with us so that we're more of a team instead of um, two companies trying to make things work together. All right, so Sheila, you've been through a number of deployments now with, with the benefit of hindsight. What advice would you give your peers as they look at uh, you know, more modern architectures such as converged okay. infrastructure? Always go into any merger with an um, open mind. What, what can you learn from it? Don't look at it, well, what's the gonna, what is this gonna cost me? Is something new I have to learn? Um, if you go into it with an open mind, you'll always be a success. Um, you'll always be able to grow from a professional standpoint. Um, you'll be, your, meet your business needs and you will be an asset to your company instead of a liability. So um, anytime you do that, I, I have saw a lot of change. I've been through um, a lot of infrastructure changes. Uh, I think the one that we have now has been one of the easiest ones because we're working together more as a team than uh, solo defects. So that's, that's what I would say. Just go into it with an open mind. If you do that, then you'll always be a success. All right, and for, for Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center, as you look forward, what are, what are some of the big challenges? You know, there's so many buzzwords out there um, and healthcare is involved. Right. I mean, IOT seems to have a huge impact. Uh, you know, the value of data and, right. and, and, and you know, data security is right. always an issue. So wh what do you right. see as kind of some of the, the big opportunities and challenges uh, that you'll be facing going forward? So challenges will always be how can we provide better health care for our patients? You know, um, um, as you come with the patient portal, you know, how can we provide uh, a more stable environment for them? Uh, for the researchers, we need to be able to provide a stable environment for that. They have loads of data. How can we collect that so that we can um, be more of a premier um, research institute I see um, being able to upgrade the infrastructure it will um, put us in a better position um, from a business standpoint to meet all the needs that we have as we grow because not only do we provide health care, um, we provide you know the teaching hospital and we provide the researchers area so I can see that um, we will only continue to grow um, as we expand with that. All right, well, Sheila Hartness, really appreciate you sharing all the wisdom that you've gained uh, through these environments, uh, you know, facing the change uh, and uh, create, creating new benefit uh, for your business and the community around. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, you've been watching theCUBE. Thank you.